Good evening and welcome to this word of encouragement for Tuesday, December the 15th. It's hard to believe that it's only 10 more days till Christmas. This is, of course, a good time of year to think about how much Jesus gave up to become a man. You know, Christianity is the only world religion that teaches that God became a man, that the infinite became finite, that the invisible became visible that eternity somehow squeezed into the body of a baby. The angel told Joseph in Matthew 1, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. That's such good news. Jesus is Emmanuel. Jesus is God with us. But what did he have to give up to come to this earth and be with us? Paul said in Philippians 2, Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. So we know he didn't give up his divine nature. He remained fully God, but he did give up many of his divine privileges, like he gave up the privilege of timelessness. Jesus, being one of the Godhead, has existed forever. Now, we can't even begin to comprehend that because we have always been bound by time, but Jesus wasn't, at least until he entered Mary's womb. He entered a world where everything is measured by time, and everything eventually ends. It doesn't matter how sweet the fellowship is, or how beautiful the sunset is, or how even happy the marriage is. It all comes to an end. Before Jesus came to the earth, he'd never said goodbye. He'd never been to a funeral. He'd never heard the words, time's up. But he who was timeless became straight-jacketed by time when he came to this earth. We'll not be able to fathom how much he gave up when he gave up his timelessness until we get to heaven and experience eternity ourselves. But he also gave up the privilege of boundlessness. If I was to ask you, where is God? Uh, you'd have to say he's everywhere because he is omnipresent. A big word that just means he's everywhere. But when Jesus cried in that stable in Bethlehem, for the first time in all eternity, deity was bound to one place at one time because if Jesus was in Bethlehem, he couldn't be in Jerusalem at the same time. He was also bound by a body that would only take him as far as his legs could carry him. He got tired and sleepy and hungry and thirsty, things that God had never experienced before. He was also bound to scarcity. He was born poor, and he lived poor. He was homeless during his ministry. He died so poor that the only thing he, he owned were the clothes that they peeled off his back. But the greatest thing he gave up was the privilege of sinlessness. We know that God is completely holy, that sin is against his very nature, that he can't have anything to do with sin. But Jesus came and lived surrounded by sinful mankind for 33 years. And as a man, he never sinned, though he was tempted in every way like we are. But we are all sinners, and the wages of sin is death. A holy God must punish sin in his justice, and the penalty is eternal separation from God. So either we must suffer separation from God ourselves, or a perfect sinless substitute must be willing to take our place. And there was only one candidate who could do that, and that was Jesus Christ, God, who had become a man and lived a perfect life. This is why Jesus was willing to leave heaven and become a man and give up his divine privileges and, and be born in Bethlehem. It was so he could have a body that was visible, touchable, and nailable. He willingly went to the cross and bore our sins and suffered the separation that we deserved. God took all of our sins and put them on the perfect righteousness of Jesus, so that Jesus' perfect righteousness could be given to us. And why did he do it? Because he loves us so much. 
I heard a story about a native of a South Sea island who had become a Christian, and he gave a beautiful shell one Christmas to the missionary who had taught him the gospel. And the missionary knew that that particular kind of shell was very rare and very precious and could only be found on the opposite side of the island, which required a day's dangerous journey there and a day's walk back. And so he thanked the man profusely <clears throat> and told him he shouldn't have gone to so much trouble. But his friend responded, the length of the journey is part of the gift. And so it was when the Son of God made the long journey from heaven to be born in Bethlehem and allowed himself to be bound by time and by space and by a body and by sin as part of his gift to us. You see, Jesus had to be bound if we were to be freed. In July of 1969, President Nixon invited Billy Graham to the White House to watch Neil Armstrong become the first man to step on the moon. As he climbed down the ladder, Nixon said to Graham, this is the greatest moment in the history of humanity. But Billy Graham responded, No, Mr. President, the greatest moment in human history is not man stepping on the moon. It's God stepping on the earth in the person of Jesus Christ. And he's right. Let's pray. Father, we are amazed when we try to comprehend what your son Jesus gave up to come to this earth to save us. We'll never completely grasp it, Father, but we are so grateful that he loved us so much that he was willing to give up his divine privileges and live like one of us and die in our stead so that we could have eternal life with you. Father, help us to always remember that and help us to always be grateful. Help us to live our lives for you and for Jesus. Forgive us when we fail, Father. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you so much for listening today, and, and if there's a way we can help you somehow to get to know this Jesus better, please let us know. So I hope you have a great week. Thank you.